Hello, today I'll be talking to you about a Sensibo product. The reason I'm bringing it up is I was looking for something to control both my AC and my heat pump in my house, and I didn't want to go with manufacturer suggested uh, product, I guess. Basically, it was an adapter that went into the unit, and it was quite expensive. It was complicated to put in, it had very limited functionality, and I started digging as to how I could make my you know, old, uh, or oh, it's really not old, but uh, my more uh, traditional, that's probably a better word for it, heat pump uh, work with something better than just a remote that they provided. So by the way, if you like these videos, give us a thumbs up and of course subscribe, that really helps us out. And thank you so much to any members and all members out there to the channel. We appreciate that, especially. So if you've got an AC and you've got a heat pump, in our case, it's a Mitsubishi, well, it comes with uh, something like this and of course you know on the face of it you'll say hey that's pretty easy temp up temp down there's a little button there to on off so it sounds like it should be real simple to use of course if you start thinking about it you'll say well wouldn't it be nice if I could program the thing so it could start in the morning and maybe when I go to work it could stop and you know things like that or it could control the temperature between certain uh, temperature to another um, so you know obviously we want more intelligence in everything we do since my channel was all about technology, well, clearly I wanted something that was smarter, better, easier. And the problem with this is there's all these buttons and really it's very tedious to go and program the darn thing. You've got to, I mean, set the time is one thing, but then you've got to say, okay, create a schedule and in half the time um, something would happen. It just, it was kind of a real pain. So the Sensible product came along. And that's what we're gonna start by unboxing. So I'll show you what comes in here. Uh, this does say Air Q. I believe they've rebranded this to the, um, uh, I think it's called Air Pro now. So take a look at what the product uh, is called when you order it. So I actually got it directly from the company, but you can also get it through places like Amazon. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a link. So, and the box really is real simple. So the first hint I'm gonna give you is when you purchase one of these, really you need one. So they do have kits for two and three. And uh, the reason why you'd wanna have more than one is if you wanna sort of monitor throughout your house, the temperatures. Now, if you get the, the, the plus version or the pro version, um, what they do is they add some sensors into this little device. And what you'll do is apart from humidity, you'll actually get and it's written right on the back, you'll get uh, CO2 sensors and you'll get uh, TVOC uh, sensor as well. So basically it can detect if things are dirty, if there's a lot of CO2, it can detect the humidity. So it's really nice to get your house overall, you know, the proper temperature and of course keep humidity at bay if that's a problem where you live. So, so here's the device and it, it really is small. I mean, it fits in my hand. So the idea is that you can have more than one. I've already got one installed right now. So I'll be able to show you what it looks like on my iPhone. And to set up, real easy. So you've got the unit itself. And the only other things you get in the box, really apart from a bit of instruction with it, is a little USB charger. And of course you've got the wire for it. And you've got a little, uh, basically it's a sticker here that you can you know, put in the back and stick it on a wall somewhere. So the second one ideally would be at a certain height on your wall or somewhere in the bedroom so that you could control and you put one close to the actual um, wall unit that's uh, giving you heat or AC. So, so once you've got this set up, um, when you turn it on, what it does is it blinks, and what it does, you take your phone, you go into the app, and at that point, you'll have to create an account. Now, for those of you who've gone out and read a lot of descriptions on Amazon and quite a few things, uh, a lot of comments seem to be that you need a subscription, um, why are they charging for this, why it's not very useful. Uh, let me tell you that for right now, my experience is I've been using one of the units, I kept the other one to make a video, um, and the subscription really is optional and it does everything that I need without the subscription. So the subscription will give you additional 
uh, graphs for like a longer period of time so you can see trends. Um, so things like that. Right out of the box though, without the subscription, you still need to go and get an account. But what that will do is, uh, the whole point is that you can, through the iPhone, uh, or as it's mentioned here, it's also um, uh, compatible basically with Alexa and you could have it on the Apple HomeLink or HomeKit rather. So both of those should work as well. And so if you were to go to work, suddenly forget that, I don't know, suddenly it's, it's freezing out there and you say, oh my, I sh probably should have turned on the heat or in reverse, uh, you go to work and it's uh, 114 degrees out there or 30 you know, plus Celsius, then you can uh, suddenly just pop out your iPhone or your Android device and just click on, uh, turn it on, set the temperature, and you know that back at home it's going to turn on and start working and cooling down the place or heating, depending on the example there. So, so to set it up, you go into the app. Once you've signed in, what it does is it will basically detect using your existing remote. So if you have a remote, all you need to do at that point is keep pressing the on off button a few times. It will detect the frequency that this uses and automatically go and connect. Now, should you find that there's something missing, it didn't quite pick the right one. In my case, in the first try, what happened is it appeared to be working fine. And then I realized I didn't have an option to heat. I only had AC and fan, and I think I had dry as well as an option. And so what I did is I went back and manually changed it. Now, this company was nice enough. I sent him an email. I got a reply very quickly. And not only that, but once I identified myself properly, because they, they didn't know what account I created because I sent them an email through a different email address, they actually went into my unit and changed it for me and sent me back an email saying, okay, we, we've altered it. Does it work now? And so the other thing you can do, of course, is you can go through the list when you go into the manual settings. There's quite a, I don't know, I'm going to say 15, but I, I didn't really count them. But there's quite a list. So you could try them one by one and see if all the functions work. And of course, the functions, apart from making sure that if you have, for example, heating as part of your, your unit, you got a heat pump, you want to make sure you've got a heat button and option on there when you go into modes. Uh, of course, I'm pretty sure that uh, since this was primarily designed for AC units, it has fan and AC and so forth, uh, pretty much standard in all the modes that I checked out. I did try them all out, but they, uh, they seem to all have that. The other thing is you want to make sure that whatever mode you pick, uh, if you have uh, air uh, ways of directing the air, for example, left, right, up or down, things like that, you want to make sure that those work. And of course, you also want to make sure that the fan speeds work. Uh, I know I tried one mode. I thought everything was fine. I tried changing the uh, fan speed at one point to get more air and realized that part wasn't working. So I had to select another mode. But uh, overall, it's very easy to use. So I'll show you the interface. And uh, really, so to set it up, it shouldn't take you more than, you know, I'm going to say 10 minutes. If uh, you take the time to go online, create the account, really is your email address, put in a password and you have to verify your email address. And that's pretty much it. So will they capture uh, information? Will they, you know, that's something that you need to go and read up on uh, for this company. So I'm not aware uh, that they do do that, uh, you know, monitor or, or use it for who knows what purpose, but uh, that's something that I would certainly, as an IT person, uh, suggest you go and read the fine print. And uh, clearly I should have uh, thought of this before making this video, but this is uh, you know, how we have to roll sometimes. So let's go ahead and take a look at the app itself and how what it looks like. And this way you can uh, you know see how easy it is to set up. And if you haven't seen one of these, um, you know, kind of defy all my non-technology friends. And there's a whole other section on the bottom. So there's a lot of buttons on here and it's just not, not as friendly, especially if you've got, um, perhaps, uh, you know, older people living in the house, they're not as tech savvy. Uh, it is much easier. And of course you could always use, um, you know, the home icon on your phone. If you've set it up to use, uh, you know, basically one of the, uh, the home kit is what I'm trying to say. Or of course, if you set it up to use Alexa, then you could actually ask Alexa to you know, turn on the heat or turn on the AC uh, and so forth. So those are options that do make your life easier. So let's put this away and let's take a quick look at 
the app and how it behaves on the unit itself. This is the Sensibo app that I downloaded. It doesn't look exactly what's on the picture on the box, but um, I'm assuming maybe that uh, they, the picture came from an Android device. Not too sure. Regardless, I mean, it's very functional. So what you can see here is you can hide. Uh, I mean, really, this is sort of the main screen. And once you select, I only have one set up, so I haven't installed the one that I just unboxed. But if you just click on it, it shows you all the details. So you really get the information on top. And of course, I'm in Celsius because I'm in Canada. But this, of course, can be changed. You simply go into settings. And here are a whole lot of different things that you could change. So you could you know, click on appearance. You could say Fahrenheit. Uh, you can change the icon. Of course, you could change the name of the room that you've put this in. And you could also see the different sensors. I only have one set up right now. And of course, you could go into your Apple Home Kit and so forth. So let's stick to really the functionality. And let's look at the air quality. So we've got the TVOCs there, which is good. And we've got the CO2, which is good. So you could set this up to turn on if these readings were to go too high. You could So that there's some settings that basically use that information specifically. Now, the other thing is, uh, obviously, to turn lower or higher, minus goes down, plus goes up. Quite simple. So let's say I'm cold. I just go ahead and put it to 19, and that's all I have to do. Now, the different modes. So I'm on heat right now. If I wanted to set it to fan, just click on fan. That's all there is to it. Of course, the fan doesn't show me a specific temperature because I can't set it to anything. It's just a fan. Of course, you can still see the temperature up on top on the right. And of course, if you back out of this, you will still see the temperature there. And it'll say AC fan high. Uh, this is, let's see, I think this is one of my timers that's on there. But right now, I've manually set it to fan. And the fan right now is on high. I mean, I could put it to any of these. If I wanted to put quiet, just press quiet. Wait a second, and there we go. And you'll see uh, right underneath where it says Bob's Dining Room AC, it says Fan Quiet. So that's the mode and how much air it's pushing out. So apart from that, you can also use these. So the swing, you can swing fixed on top. You can go all the way to fixed on the bottom. And of course, you could have it move so it moves up and down. And you could also move it from left to right and of course you could center it and you can actually set it so it moves continually from left to right so you can do a combination both of those neither of those i usually just set them to center and leave them like that but that's uh that's what it is now the interesting part here is the scheduling scheduling is real easy so you can create schedules and they're quite easy to create. You just press on the plus and you say, what do I want? I want Wednesday. I want to turn it on. I want to turn on the fan. And I want the setting to be on, I don't know, medium. And I can fix the swing. So I want it to be in the middle. And do I want a uh, horizontal swing? Well, it stopped. I'm going to set it to oh, center center right so it doesn't really matter you can say fix center there we go it's and you could go and there's no i think i just selected fan so there's no temperature if i had set heat or ac then i could select the the temperature i want and you'll notice in the bottom it says schedule climate react or schedule presence react that's something a little more complex uh this if you have more than one these units uh, can actually detect if you and by you, I mean if your cell phone or the is your smartphone is connected uh, and within communication distance. So if you had two um, individuals living in your home, for example, and they're both connected to this app, when they leave, you could say, hey, when I'm out of the house, I want you to turn off the AC or I want you to. So you could schedule it to react to presence so that when you come back and you get back into the house it detects that you were there then it could put ac on and of course you know works the same for heating so that is how that works and of course you can turn these off at any time 
So you could say, you know, like right now these are off. I want to put them on. All I got to do is make them green right there. And there you go. So that's all it takes. And then at 8.30 a.m., in this case, Monday to Friday, what this will do is it will heat quiet and it will bring it up to 18 degrees Celsius. Now, the only other thing that we have are timers. So you could say, okay, I want this to run for X number of time, and that's very straightforward. And the last but not least is this portion here, which are graphs. And what that will do is it will show you, um, you'll see at the bottom where you've got temperature and you've got the humidity level. I believe if you keep going here, you can see us. So you can see the TVOC. So, and you can see the CO2. I'm not sure what this one does. Outside pollution. Okay, so it, it, it does ask you for where you live. So if you uh, geolocate yourself, it will be able to basically uh, you know, look it up and give you some information on that. Now, if you were to pay for the subscriptions, like I mentioned earlier, then what you do is you would get the week and you would get, well, actually it's written right here. So here's the plus features. So you get extended graphs. Uh, you can have the climate react scheduling. Uh, you can have something called an AC system health check. Uh, weather and pollution, open window detection. That, that's an interesting feature, basically. I, I understand it uses uh, AI to decide if uh, something's abnormal. So if a window were to be open, for example, and it's letting heat in, uh, in case of you're in a warm climate or cold in if you're in the middle of winter up north. So AC usage and statistics, auto off energy saver and anti mold growth. So and, and again, it's written at the bottom here. You can buy it uh, yearly and it's you know, three dollars Canadian uh, per month or so. And look it up in wherever you are to see what your rates are. Uh, again, it's I don't have it. I don't have any subscription on this right now, so you can see what it does and how it works without the subscription. Uh, seems acceptable to me. That's for you to decide if you have enough features or not on here. So I'm Bob Peller and CTO Bob. We hope you've enjoyed this video. Please leave us some comments below. We love reading those. And of course, we'd love to hear about your experiences, both in uh, heating and cooling with a sensible product. We'll see you in the next video.